Do you need to get tougher? I've got just the formula. Hey friends, this is Pastor Ron with this week's Message of Hope. For a long time now, gardening has been my hobby. A few years ago, I tried growing uh, plants from seeds and I didn't have very much success, honestly. But this year, I took it to a whole new level. Would you just look at these beauties, huh? Tomato plants nearly two feet tall, peppers, basil, cabbage, they've done amazingly well. The secret, I think, was investing in some heat mats and putting them under lights. It was ideal growing conditions in my basement. But the next step is also critical. I've taken the plants outside slowly, a little bit more each day to expose them to the wind and the sun. It's called hardening off. Plants won't have the strength to make it outdoors when you transplant them if they don't acclimate to the wind and the elements. They get transplant shock. In other words, they gotta get tough. And if they don't get tough, they'll get beat up by the elements and they won't make it. <clears throat> you know, the same is true for us. We will not grow as people and disciples of Jesus unless we go through trials and hardships. The scriptures teach this over and again. One of the passages I've referred to a number of times during this hard year is James 1, where it says, Consider pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything. When we're tested, James says, we get perseverance and maturity. Perseverance is stick to We just refuse to quit. Maturity is becoming complete and whole. We need both spiritual and emotional maturity. Put another way, when we're sheltered from life's trials and hardships, it's easy to quit. We stay in permanent adolescence, spiritually and emotionally. <clears throat> A very good biblical example of this is the life of Joseph. God had his hand on this young man, the great grandson of Abraham. God had big plans for him. And he started to receive a series of dreams early in his life that would prepare him for that plan. Joseph was an adolescent when he started getting these dreams and he really didn't know how to handle this knowledge. He started telling others about how he was gonna become great and that even his brothers and sisters and, and parents would bow down to him. Well, that was all true, but sharing it wasn't wise. As a result, his brothers hated him. On top of that, Joseph was pampered by his father. He was given the clothes of a supervisor, even though he was young, and didn't have to do manual labor like his brothers. He didn't have to go out into the hot sun and work the fields or care for the flocks. His father, Jacob, pretty much sheltered him from any and all adversity. You can read the full story in the book of Genesis, but Joseph's brothers had enough, and they sold him into slavery. But the scriptures say the Lord was with Joseph. He becomes a slave at an, in an influential family, an official in Egypt, and he does so well, he's put in charge of everything until the man's wife takes a liking to Joseph, and when he refuses her advances, she accuses him of assault, and Joseph gets thrown into prison, but the scriptures say the Lord was with him. He languishes in prison for years, but God gives him the ability to interpret dreams, and that becomes his ticket to get out of prison and into the powerful position God prepared for him. Here's the bottom line. As long as, jo as long as Joseph was sheltered and kept from life's hardships, he was deeply immature. There's nothing like getting sold into slavery or sent to prison to get toughened up. He went through extreme trials because God had a great work for him to do, the saving of many lives. Do you think this last year has revealed some spiritual and emotional immaturity in our lives? Instead of complaining about all of the hardships of the past year, what if we were to do what James tells us to do? What if we were to rejoice and see this as a path to becoming tougher, more persevering and mature people? What if we were to cooperate with the work of the Holy Spirit and growing us up? I can't wait for the first ripe tomatoes off of these plants. They're gonna produce a great harvest, I know. And I know because they've been toughened up. And you know what? You're gonna produce a great harvest in your life because this past year has toughened you up. So rejoice and be glad because God is taking all of the hardship and making you mature, complete, and whole, and ready for the important work that he has in store for you.